You mentioned something about during your playing days with the Braves, you did not feel like Turner Field was a home field quote unquote advantage until the later rounds of the postseason. That is not the case for Truist Park and currently the atmosphere there uh, in Cobb County. Yeah, I can remember 2003, and I think the Braves fans. No disrespect, I've lived there for 20-plus years. We're almost in a malaise, like, hey, we're, we make the playoffs every year. We win the division every year. we got to get through this division series, and then we'll start buying in. We have three Hall of Fame pitchers. We have Chipper, Bobby, Andrew. I mean, we should go to the NLC. Well, it doesn't always come to pass, yeah. right? And I always felt like, well, where, where's where the is juice everybody? in here? Yeah. And I don't know if it's just them moving it to Truist Park, moving it to Cobb County the defending World Series champs. I am going to – I gave a couple takeaways on Friday what I was looking for, and it kind of played out true. But I want to dive in. I'm going to go sound full here because if you're going to come in to Atlanta, into Truist Park, this is what you got to deal with. This is real. Run this. <laughs> You sure you want to play in the big league? Ah! You want to be able to handle that moment? Hey, the Mets had it all in front of them, okay? And I want to take you through this. Jacob DeGrom, we've chronicled him. And he had 11 punch outs, but he gave up three bombs. Can you run that back for me or no? And pause it real quick. We talked about this multiple times at the Skybox. Jacob DeGrom never comes inside. Mm. He always Heater away, slider away. So I thought it was real interesting that he tried to shake it up a little bit. Maybe he knew the Braves were going to lean out over. Guys were going to try and take him up the middle the other way. Here's a guy trying to reinvent himself where I no don't necessarily think he has to. And he tries to execute a heater in. Doesn't get it in. Dansby, you're a winner, son. I mean, it's real. It's every time making big plays in big moments. Max Scherzer sitting down watching this game Saturday night. He didn't have it. He didn't have his big heater. He didn't have great command. He was grinding. He gave you his heart. He gave you everything. But at the end of the day, he didn't have it. And the offense wasn't able to pick him up. And then Bassett yesterday, more the same, got into a certain situation oh. where he couldn't slow the moment down. And it ended up costing him to let the Braves back in it. Matt Olson, wow, he has gone off lately. So nice to see. He went through an epic 9 for 81 slump recently and oh. has found his timing and rhythm. 5 for 9, 3 homers, 5 RBIs against the Mets this weekend. He's got 5 bombs in his last 6 games. And I thought this was the momentum shifter. You talk about instincts. Mm. Your instinct is to touch it. Yeah. We all want to touch it. That's that's the title of my yeah. book. Damn right it is. Right. But he lets that go by. It could have been 4-1. Also, Austin Riley, Mets that's get out to a play, man. <laughs> right? How do you not Ow. grab that baseball? Crazy. And then on the flip side, there he is going deep. I'm saying to myself, Jacob DeGrom. They get a one nothing lead. Here he is. He's going to the woodshed right here. Austin Riley shoots him. It's like they've been in these big moments, but when the dust settled, for me, one of the biggest takeaways is how many weapons are in the Braves bullpen. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was anybody Brian Snicker called upon. This Marcel dude Iglesias has not Jeez. gotten hit since he's put on a Braves uni. And for all the people wondering if Kenley Jansen was losing it, what we're going to do in the closer situation, he was dominant again. Dylan Lee coming in in the fifth. McHugh showing emotion right there. Look at this Look bullpen. At this. Catching fire. And they Jesse did the Chavez, same thing last year. Minter. It's the same thing last year with the bullpen. Um, I, I, I think, and I've said it, I said it about six weeks ago. I think they're the most complete team in all of baseball, and I'm including the Dodgers. Are you including I'm, the Astros? I'm, I'm, I'm including the Astros. I'm going to say something, Mets fans. You, regardless of the division, this is where if the Braves do clinch, this is where I feel like a meeting gets called. Time out. We are not going to fold. We are too talented. We have two of the best starters this game's ever seen. Not just in the game today. Ever. And we can go on a run. Jeff McNeil, hats off to you. You showed up in a big way. You rake. But I, 
I think the thing for me is the Mets can't allow themselves to just go into a hole now because they're going to wind up when the Braves do win this division, and I fully expect that to be the case. They're going to stare the San Diego Padres, looks like, in the face, and we're going to talk about them in a second with you, Darvish, and Blake Snell. So, yeah. Scherzer will be the guy to deliver that message, and he will deliver it well. Somebody. I'd like to see Buck deliver it because he got interviewed yesterday in the middle of the game, and, and he's like, oh, it's just another game? Ah, is it? By the way, the in-game interviews with the managers make me nervous. Uh, it's not it's make you nervous. Game. I, I, I wish they would stop <laughs> because it's, it's uncomfortable. But you get <laughs> some sound bites. Do you? Sometimes. I mean, no disrespect, you really don't. Okay. But it just gives me the, don't anything bad happen while he's being in it. So much to digest, right? Who would have thought? I would have hey. never put the Braves on a sweep right there. Brian Snicker said he drove to the yard on Friday and told his wife the postseason starts tonight. Sweep? Yes, That's big time right there.